Driffield is a former Royal Air Force base 1.7 miles southwest of Driffield in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Driffield was first used in World War I by the Royal Flying Corps and it was chosen for airfield construction in 1932 and was the first expansion period airfield to open in Yorkshire. At the outbreak of war, 102 and 77 Squadron were then flying Whitley's from Driffield. Shortly after 1pm on the 15th of August 1940, radar operators picked up inbound echoes over the North Sea. This was the Aldertag, or Eagle Day, the second part of an attack on the northeast coast in which the Luftwaffe hoped to eliminate the RAF before the German invasion. Their target was clear the RAF airfield at Driffield, 10 miles inland of Bridlington and home to two Whitley squadrons. It's uncertain how many aircraft reached the airfield, various reports say anything between 12 to 40, the exact number being unclear. What is clear, however, is that the airfield was devastated and 13 people were killed on sight. This was the heaviest raid of the war on an RAF bomber station. The station reopened as a fighter base until April 1941 when 104 Squadron was formed on Wellingtons. They flew from Driffield until May 1942. Halifaxes were coming into use with four group so Driffield's concrete runways were built and in June 1944 466 Squadron arrived with its Halifaxes. 466 Squadron was later joined by 462 Squadron. They flew on most of the major sorties in the later stages of the war. Flying continued after the war until in 1958 Driffield was converted to house four ballistic missiles. These remained until 1963. Afterwards, the base was briefly used as a test centre for Buccaneer aircraft from Bruff. In 1977, it was acquired by the Army for the School of Mechanical Transport and became known as Alamein Barracks. The runways were removed, the air raid shelters disappeared and the hangars were converted to store surplus grain for the government. The Army used Driffield for driver training until RAF Leckenfield was enlarged. In 1992, ownership passed back to the RAF. It was renamed RAF Staxton Wold. In June 1996, the RAF ensign was lowered for the last time at Driffield. So here we are, um, RAF Driffield, in all its resplendent glory, looking very, very spooky indeed. <clears throat> okay, we're just making our way up to the main door to this building. There are that many buildings on site, guys. This is just one of them, and we're quite taken aback by how big this was. So it's going to take us months to uh, investigate them all. Is it funnily enough that, yeah. Yeah, there's an owl in that tree back there and it sounds like a human doing a bad impression out of an owl which is really off-putting. Anyway, Mark's inside. Uh, let's take a trot inside there, see what he's up to. Oh, 
Okay, just starting to take a poke around some of these some of these rooms now. Um, and here, a massive, massive room. Uh, let's get a bit more light on the subject. There we go. Probably used as some kind of mess hall. Well, it's certainly big enough. Yeah, funnily enough, you know, thinking back, this building in particular is built exactly the same as the main building left at Binbrook RAF in North East Lincolnshire. They all must have been built to a particular plan. Did you see it? Just on the floor. Okay, I'm going to highlight this in a freeze frame. We've come across this phenomena before, and we in PSI call these energy bursts. It's a small flash of light accompanied by a pop or a crack. It was a crack in this instance. Let me play the video again. What do you think? After having a look around the lower floors myself, I decided to make my way down the corridor that Mark went down. Apparently he was looking for the cellar. I think it's in this direction. Let's see if we can find him. Where are you, man? steps at the end, so you can go straight on me, I can see that.
It's round about now, we decide we've done enough exploring and we want to do some investigating, so we're looking for an appropriate room and I think we just found one. even left us some handy little cupboards to pile stuff in. Astounded at the quality of this creepy Class A EVP we just captured on digital audio, but it wasn't until we reviewed the camera footage that we realised we'd caught a second real-time voice repeating the same instruction, stop. We'll play that clip again for you right now. again and for the benefit of the camera we'll show there's something on this
Turn back on that. See if he's got the same. Yeah. At this point, we decide to review the footage on Mark's digital recorder to see if it's documented the EVP. It hasn't. It's only recorded on mine, which is strange in itself. It's not on mine. Is it not on yours? No, it's not on. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's do some more. We'll set and record at the same time again. Two. Three. What was that? It was somehow out there, like a car in the distance or something. What was that? No, no, no. This loud click was a sound that emanated inside the room that I simply hadn't heard at the time. I tried to put it down to traffic noise in the distance that Mark was hearing through the window. Upon reviewing the video, it definitely was not traffic noise. Can you please tell us what your rank number is? So when we asked that just for the camera, we heard footsteps. I was looking at Tony, he was looking at me, neither of us were moving. There was footsteps over there from where Tony's camera is just in the corner there. In this clip you can clearly hear the leaf litter under my feet making exactly the same noise as the ghostly footsteps we just heard. As we're filming down there, was that was that somebody up there? What did he just hear something? I thought I heard another footstep. Yeah. We spend another 15 minutes here but experience no more paranormal phenomena. So we pack up and move on to the second building. As we're going through there, shall we, shall we go and have a look at that building behind us? Yes. Job. Military personnel. 
any bomber pilots use this device to communicate with us. We've come from Hull to our airfield to communicate with the spirit that here. Can you speak to this device please? Can you tell me your name? My name's Mark and this is Tony. After a spirit box session lasting around 40 minutes, we received no replies whatsoever. That's no replies on the spirit box, no words, nothing, which is unusual in itself. So, as time is getting on, we decide to call it a day for part one of our investigation of the Driffield site. Yes. Now we know all the little devious tricks. We sincerely hope you've enjoyed part one of our investigation of the disused Driffield RAF base. Look out for updates. More investigations of this place are on the cards hopefully documenting more ghostly phenomena. Please give us a like, ring that bell, leave a comment and please, please subscribe. This means the world to us and means we can deliver more honest, level-headed investigations. We'll bid you farewell for now, but always remember guys, the paranormal just got real. That is pretty damn good, isn't it? Mm-hmm.